All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode here at Go Rails. In this episode, we're going to take a deep dive into the authenticate by uh, method that's been introduced uh, with Has Secure Password recently. Uh, there'll be it's available now in Rails 7.1 Beta 1. Uh, and it'll be part of the full 7.1 release when that comes out. So popping over to the uh, pull request pull request where this was merged in, this was um, submitted by Jonathan Hefner, uh, fellow Louisianian. Uh, Jonathan, if you're watching, hello. Thank you for this and everything else. And for all the contributors, I say thank you all. So uh, looking at the commit message here, uh, from this, we can get a little more insight as to why this was introduced in Rails and what it's uh, solving here. Okay, so typically, if you're using um, you know, has secure password previously with the bcrypt gem and uh, has secure password in Rails here, you typically do your auth authentication something like this. You'd find the user, right, and then call dot authenticate on it and pass in the password that was submitted over. The issue here is that, uh, as Jonathan states here, that the code is vulnerable to timing-based uh, enumeration attacks. And we'll look at some examples of this as we dig into this more. But basically, to read on, a user can determine if a user account exists with a given email, whether or not they actually got the password right. Okay, So essentially, based on the response time of your application, an attacker can tell, like, ooh, I've probably stumbled upon, upon an account uh, that exists with this email that I submitted through, even though the password I submitted was wrong. And that's solely based off the response time of the app. So you can read uh, more about this here, but let's go uh, look at an example of this timing attack uh, right now. So I have a very simple example app set up right now. It's essentially just a uh, sign up, log in, log out, edit your account, uh, details, application. That's all it does, okay? So let's go make an actual account. Let's go to sign up. And we'll fill out all this stuff here. I'll just say colin at go.co. And then I'll submit a password, password confirmation. Hopefully these match and let's sign up. So, okay, we see our, uh, get this out of here. We'll see our welcome aboard message. Okay. And then there's a logout button and here's our account. Okay. Now let's go log out. Now we're back at the login page here. Okay. And I'm going to open up uh, the network tab here in the inspector and let's clear this out. So let's try to log in with a, an account that we know doesn't exist. Okay. So let's just say email is foo at bar.com and we'll just type in some gibberish password. Okay. Now if we try to log in, if we look at the response time here, 23.7 milliseconds. Okay. So now remember that was with a user that we know doesn't exist. Okay. That, that, that email is not uh, in our database. Now let's try to log in with the email that I just used to create my account, but with a, uh, in, an incorrect password. So let's say Colin at go.co. And then it would just type some stuff in here. We try to log in. We see right here that that response time was much larger, 249 milliseconds compared to 23.7 milliseconds previously. Okay. So this is an example where if the, if the attacker is typing in a bunch of email, fake email addresses and you know, the majority of them are giving back really small response times like this, and then they stumble upon one that's, you know, a few hundred milliseconds difference. That's a good indicator to them that, Ooh, I've probably stumbled upon an, an email that is actually valid. Just, I just didn't submit the right password over. So now they can start attacking that, uh, account using that email address. 